In this video, I just want to give some general tips and tricks from all the years that I've used RoboCode in my classrooms and robots I've built myself and um, you know tournaments and different things I've been involved in. And uh, I do think it's important that uh, individuals have that discovery process, trying stuff and seeing what works and coming up with better ways of doing it. And so I don't just want to give away everything, but I do want to give some general strategy. And so uh, one of the things I'm going to look at first is in our robot. So we've been building a robot. I'll open the source editor, go back and open up that bot we've been working on. So file, open, and go back into our ro robots folder. I have an IS folder, RoboCode fun. So if in my uh, robot there is something that I don't have that I want to do. So if I go look at the API and say, help RoboCode API, and I go pull up that robot class that we're inheriting from, and I look and see, these are all the different things it can do, and particularly in the on methods that are generated when something happens. So I have a lot of these things, but there are some of them like on hit robot that I don't have. This method is called when your robot collides with another robot. I currently don't have that in here. And so one hint is that we may want to utilize these things and figure out what we want to do when some of these things happen that aren't just in the general bot. And so if I want to do something when I hit a robot, I can uh, go in and it has the method signature for me. So I can copy this out and then inside the class still, remember, but, but after the other methods, I can come in and drop in that uh, on hit robot method and now I can go in and write code to say what I want to do when I hit a robot. And what is it that I want to do when I when I hit a robot? Now one of the big hints I have is to go in and look at the other bots. So we've been given, if we go in and look at and, and, uh, the robot editor at file open, we've been given all these sample bots to us. Let's go look and see what they're doing. And the one I'm going to look at, because the classic example on hitting a robot, is Ramfire. Ramfire does a lot of damage by ramming. And so if I go look, sure enough, Ramfire has implemented the on hit robot uh, method. And, and, and so if we look at the detail here, what is Ramfire doing? If the bearing is greater than or equal to zero, then make the turn direction one. Otherwise, make the turn direction negative one. We'll have to see how that's implemented. But um, then uh, Ramfire turns right to the bearing, turns right to the robot, and then uh, it's got a little comment in here to help us understand what it's doing. Determine a shot that won't kill the robot. Ramfire wants to ram the robot uh, for bonus points. And so there's this little calculation to see how much energy is left and then fires to take that energy down and then rams them. And when Ramfire rams somebody, then immediately the on hit robot event is regenerated and we go right back into it. And so Ramfire will just keep ramming. If you've, if you've been in a battle with Ramfire, you know uh, that bot is relentless, just kind of bam, 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 bam. And, and does a lot of damage through ramming. Now, obviously, as you're ramming somebody, you're taking a lot of damage yourself. And so another hint is, because there's that bonus, if you look at the scoring, that if you ram a bot, you can do a check on a scanned robot and say, if the energy is zero. So there's a lot of times you're, the, the robot you're battling against has spent all of its energy, then instead of... Uh, firing a shot, you might want to turn toward that robot and then move forward to ram them because you're going to get 10% more in bonus. And so um, that's another general strategy. But we can go and implement methods that uh, aren't default methods by looking at what robot has available to it and then going in and uh, using whichever ones we think are applicable. Uh, and that's just, you know, when I'm creating my bots, I make little changes. So back to our robot, um, I might say, well, what happens if I go ahead by a hundred instead of 50 after I've, you know, gotten away from the wall? Um, I think that's going to be bad, but I, well, let's try it. Um, so I can save that, compile it, 
and then uh, implement it in the battle. And I just love this feature that I can go in with these different bots that I have that I've been given, and I can just drop in, double click on these to bring them in, uh, bring in some different bots and just try it. Now we can watch it work, which you can learn a lot from that, but we can also turn the speed up to a thousand and say, okay, so that seemed to make things worse. At least I, I put in some different bots than we've been using. And so I'll just watch it a few times. That time I took first, but the percentage was only 28% of the points, 32. And so then I can go back into my uh, code, change it back to 50. And so, so much of what you're doing in RoboCode is just trial and error. Just try something, implement it, and then test it against the different bots and see if it, it improved it or not. So I put it back to 50, and now I took a third, so that's kind of scary. Did I make it worse? And there's a first with 30%, 31%. Or that was 30, sorry, I was second. And so I can go in and make those determinations. And so one of the general strategies that I think is important is in the ring as we're, as we're fighting. So if you're in the middle of the ring, there's so much more action, bullets flying, and you're in much more danger if you're in these center parts. If you stay on the outsides of the ring somehow, then um, you tend to take less damage. Um, the other problem, though, is if you get a bot, so I've seen bots like uh, walls be effective because they stay on the very perimeters, but if you have a uh, repeatable pattern that, that someone can pick up on, that they know where you're going to be, then um, that can be a problem as well. And so Crazy actually has, uh, you know, you can go look and see it, uh, Crazy strategy. They have no discernible, discernible pattern, which... Uh, you know, in this type of a situation when there's a lot of bullets flying can be dangerous, but it also can be really handy when there's just you and one bot left um, to not have a, a predictable pattern. And so one of the tips might be to change your strategy based on how many others are in the battle. And so if you look at the API, there's a get um, others and this returns an integer to say uh, how many opponents are left in the current crowd. So you can go into your bot and in, the, in your default run, you can say if get others is whatever, you know, greater than three, then implement one strategy. Else implement another strategy. And so um, anyway, or you can say if there's one person left, then, then do this particular strategy. And so there's a lot we can do in, in uh, customizing the game based on uh, different factors in the game. How many people are left? What is their energy? I see so many people running out of energy. And I really think that when you scan a robot, you need to have some sort of, uh, you know, condition in place, an if statement or whatever, where you're determining, I'm only going to fire if I have the energy to fire. Otherwise, I'm going to back down. And so I can do a tiered firing approach. I've seen people, you know, the further bots are away, then they fire with a lower power because the bolts fly flat, fly faster. And so there's lots of things we can do as we're thinking about our um, robots. And a lot of it is just testing, observing, seeing the behavior, seeing where you get stuck or where you have problems, and then trying to come up with a strategy to uh, combat whatever that problem is, and then implement it in code, test it using our little handy thousand speed tester to see, is it a strategy that's successful? And so those are just some general hints and tips to try and help you be successful uh, in your bots. I love the, the process. I love the experience of trial and error, seeing what works and seeing what doesn't work. And in the meantime, we're learning all about variables and objects and classes and instances. And um, it's a great process. So I hope you have fun with it. And uh, good luck out there in the ring. Spencer out.